Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's everybody. We're in downtown Sanford. We're gonna go catch dinner at Willow Tree. And then we're gonna go, hopefully, if the sky holds out, we're gonna go to a haunted ghost tour downtown. Let's check it out. <laughs> So as we're walking over to Willow Tree, I was not planning on doing any of this tonight, especially with the bad weather, but Mary surprised me, which is ironic because I know Mike the Alien wanted to go over to Willow Tree tomorrow, so I'm coordinated. One of the greatest things that you can see after not eating an entire day is this menu. DOS menu. got a giant pretzel to start. Is there anything more predictable? I don't think so. This is what I got. Two sausages, spotzel rim sauce, potato pancakes, this Nuremberg, and Cajun worst. Mary got this ridiculous looking thing, ice spine, and Jesse got schnitzel. Schnatcha natcha schnitzel, schnitzel. I normally don't stop mid food. This is just amazing. And the Cajun sausage, even though it's not really German, I guess, it's delicious. I got dessert, German chocolate cake. Jesse got triple chocolate cheesecake. Mary got nothing because she didn't finish her food. Food. Well, I am stuffed now. Check out that sunset all the way in the distance. So it stopped raining. So this is what we are going on the Sanford Ghost Tours. We're 20 minutes early. Womp womp. Save the clock tower. Save the clock fountain. So we're gonna head out on our ghost tour. It's only the three of us tonight. I think the weather probably deterred other folks from going. It's a little awkward, but we'll see what we can pull for you guys. He decided to pull a prank on his dad in one of the junkyards, and he hid in the trunk of a car, um, not realizing he couldn't open it from the inside. Um, his dad was on the other side of the, uh, of the junkyard and realized after a couple of hours that, you know, Bobby wasn't there anymore. So, um, he went looking all over the place, um, he couldn't find, he couldn't find Bobby anywhere. Bobby had fallen asleep in the trunk of the car after a couple of hours of struggling to get out. He was tired. Um, unfortunately that car was marked for demolition and poor Bobby died in that car and got crushed. So nobody got to look in the trunk. Um, and uh, uh, Robert was, was crushed and he decided to pack up and move out of, of Sanford after that. Um, now, here's where the story gets interesting. We would sometimes encounter little Bobby because he's still a prankster and he still likes to be, get recognition for his pranks. So when we'd be in there, yes, we were drinking, so <laughs> might have just been drunk, but um, there were several, several occasions where um, we'd feel something brush up against our leg or they'd have quarter doors there um, going into the back and one of the quarter doors would be slammed into your face. Oh. Um, you know, just little things like that. You'd just go, okay, Bobby, you know, and that, and that was that. Well, a friend of mine, Lauren, worked in there once and um, she was there on a Monday night back when there was nothing going on on Mondays here. So we were lucky to get a couple of people to come in, but the owner wanted to keep the bar open on Mondays um, just in case they got, you know, a football crowd or whatever. So she was in there alone one night about 11 o'clock and the owner told her she could close at midnight. So she started uh, she started free stocking. So she'd go back in the, in the walk-in and get some beers to stock out front. Now, if you're familiar with a walk-in at a restaurant, it's just a giant freezer box. Um, it's got a big knob on the inside that says, you're not locked in, push this uh, to get out. Well, she had, uh, the woman was in there, so she went back there to do her stocking and she went back and she couldn't open the door. It wouldn't open. 
the button just wouldn't work. So she was in there for a good 45 minutes and was starting to really freak out. It's now like a quarter to midnight. Um, suddenly, out of desperation, she just screamed, all right, Bobby, enough. And I won't say that it magically opened, but somebody heard her scream and came and opened the door from the outside. Um, the next day, she quit. <laughs> Um, that's another place where we were usually having a couple of drinks before we went over there, so we just call it the fish pond. Oh, we've, we've been there before. Okay. So, um, Mo's a bit eccentric, but she sees and hears things that other people don't. Uh, she actually, her and another, uh, her and another uh, medium um, actually investigated uh, the last building that we're going to go to, which I think is probably the most haunted building in Sanford, um, at least from my experience. But uh, the fish pond used to be in here. Um, before she left, before she uh, staked a claim over on Sanford Avenue. And she would tell me that there were two ghosts here. There was one that um, was an intelligent type um, and identified himself as Razorback to her. Um, that was the name that she said that he said. And she figured it was kind of like a carny name, uh, that he was uh, he was involved with Carnival. Um, and said that whenever uh, Razorback was around, doors opened and closed, and um, you could hear him in the back, in that back, um, uh, the back courtyard that one was using right now, you could hear him back there clicking like he was calling for a dog. And that she'd hear that all the time. Um, that he smelled of cheap cigars and cheaper blow. Um, and as mischievous as he, as he was, he wasn't intent on harming anybody, but um, over next door was a lady that had um, a pen and paper shop, and um, she liked everything meticulously arranged. She was a little AD, ADD. And so she, everything was arranged exactly how she wanted it. And she'd go on break out in the courtyard to have a smoke. She'd come back and everything was all disarranged. And she said that that was probably Razorback messing with her. Um, but that's not what's, what, what scared me. Um, Mo said that uh, there was another um, ghost that would come in. And she said she could see him pretty clearly. And other people had seen him too. And he was dressed in World War uh, II guard with a rifle. And he was the type two. He would come in, sit down, stay for about 15, 20 minutes, look up, look like he recognized someone or something, and then got up and walked over towards it. And Mo used to mess with people because uh, he was in a common area here, so people would sometimes sit on him. And she would go, you know, you're sitting on a ghost. And they'd be like, what? And like, yeah, there's a ghost right there. He just sat on him and he's looking at you. And they'd like, kind of get freaked out. And she'd be like, well, you know, he, she'd describe him. Like, he, he's wearing World War II outfit. He's got a rifle, but don't worry. He's here for someone else, not you. And they'd be like, okay, Mo. <laughs> Until one night, this older gentleman had come in, and he sat there, and he was drinking his, um, he was drinking his beers, his tall boys, and uh, he got up and he switched seats and he sat right down on where the ghost was. And Mo did her spiel. Are you sitting on a ghost? I don't care. You know, she'd go through her whole spiel with him, and the guy was like, I don't care, I'm not listening. I'm just gonna sit here. So after about 10 minutes, the guy keels over and clutches his chest. Now, He's okay, he didn't die, it wasn't a heart attack. He just had uh, really, really bad indigestion and heartburn. Mm -hmm. And the paramedics came, the guy was really embarrassed. But what scared, uh, what kind of scared and irked Mo at the same time was that for the first time ever, instead of getting up and walking over, the ghost just looked up at her and smiled. Well, ghost tour over, that was fun. We took a tour with Gary from Sanford Ghost Tour. We didn't see any actual ghosts. We had some really good stories about the places that are around Sanford downtown. Haunted. Awesome. Some of the ghost stories included hollerback, so that was super cool. Super creepy for the next time that we eat there. Jesse's so happy lighting candles. Condols. What was this light? Fire, fire. Day, dear dad, father. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Yay! So Sammy's on one seat where he wants cake. And he's on the other seat where he wants cake. It's like a cat birthday party. What do you think, sir? Hey everybody, it's Saturday. So, came home last night, had the cake, and sat down on the bed and completely fell asleep. And woke up two hours later, and Mary was asleep next to me, completely in her jacket and everything else too, because I guess she might have been trying to wake me up. But anyway, 
We slept the entire night. I slept 11 hours. So you would think that I would be nice and refreshed, but I'm actually very lazy right now. So lazy that it is almost one o'clock and I've done nothing. So, um, except for book a reservation for Mango's later tonight. So we're gonna go to Mango's Cafe tonight. We'll get a video for you hopefully tomorrow of like their stage shows to do like a Michael Jackson impersonator and stuff like that. On that note, signing off for now. So thank you for all of your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night and day. We'll talk to you. See ya. Happy Easter. I've got Ant-Man living in my house. Look at this. So we're waiting to see. This rocket is supposed to be launching right now. Any minute now, we should see it behind this tree. We're waiting patiently. It's Florida cold outside. I do not see anything yet. What is going on here? Man, this is taking a long time. Oh, I see it. It is launching up there behind the trees. I'll try to get in there on it for you. It is a giant circle for you. Hopefully it's coming out better on the other thing. No, it's a giant circle. There we go. thing is t tearing right now, holy cow. Let me tell you what, for anybody not living in Florida, this is one of those things that you really come to appreciate while you're living here. It's starting to burn out a little bit. Look at that go. going behind my palm tree. And now it's a ball again. It's gone.